It was from these border areas with India that the Bangladesh Liberation Army, the Mukti Bahini, launched its military campaign. By May 1971, the Mukti Bahini were making their presence felt. If the Pakistanis were to win the guerrilla war, they would need more help from local collaborators. In July, the leadership of the Jamaat held a secret meeting here in Dhaka. Lutfur Rahman represented the Silhet district. The meeting's purpose was to form a paramilitary death squad called the Al-Badr to help the Pakistani military. Pakistan. Pakistan had come about because of Islam, so this country had to be defended for Islam. So we will fight to the death as Mujahid, and we have to do this as an Islamic Jihad. That is why we have taken the name Al-Badr. The Jihad must be carried out through the Al-Badr. While in Silhet, dispatches obtained evidence from a collaborator who has detailed inside information of the Jamaat leadership during the war. Fearing reprisals if he spoke out, he asked to remain anonymous. He says Abu Sayyid was recruited as a senior commander of the al Badr in Silhet. Abu Sayyid was a bit of a vicious person, stubborn, a furious type. Officially, Farid Chaudhary was number one, and Abu Sayyid was number two. But in practical terms, Abu Sayyid was more effective. In execution, Abu Sayyid was better. He was superior. Shabir Jalalabadi vividly recalls meeting Abu Sayyid in Silhet town. During the war, he was working underground for the independence movement. One day, he was arrested and taken to the al Bada headquarters for questioning. After entry, Abu Sayyid asked me the first question. He asked, where were you going? He questioned me in a very aggressive manner. I said that I have a house here and I have come here to find out what condition it is in. He didn't really believe me. Perhaps it was because he didn't believe me or perhaps it was to get me to confess that he hit me hard with all his force. Shabir was only 16 at the time and he managed to convince Abu Sayyid of his innocence. He gave me a warning. If I ever catch you supporting the liberation war or opposing Pakistan, I will kill you immediately, without hesitation. Abu Sayyid maintains he remained in the Silhet district throughout the war. But according to the anonymous witness, in August 1971, the al Badr sent Abu Sayyid to Dhaka for training in both military and intelligence gathering techniques. He went to Dhaka and received advanced training. He could even operate a light machine gun and similar weapons. There was another training on how to make lists of those who were anti-Pakistan, those against Pakistan. Al Badr training took place here at this government run physical training center in Dhaka. During the war, it became notorious as a center for torture and killing. The caretaker witnessed the horror that took place here Rahman Ali. There would be training twice a day. After the training, they would kill a few people themselves and cut them up and dump them. And then they would shoot some in Rair Bajar and dump them too. Those still breathing would be shot. Raya Bazaar was a swamp near the torture center, which was used as a mass grave. Victims were taken there to be killed. Delwa Hussain is one of the very few survivors of the death camp. 24 years ago, he was taken to Raya Bazaar with hundreds of other prisoners for execution. When the al Badr started shooting, he dropped to the ground as if dead. He gave dispatches first-hand evidence of the al Badr's torture techniques. The skin and the scalp were cut and they put out some people's eyes and the teeth and people's mouths were smashed. The skin was all and the entire floor was the entire floor was covered in blood 
According to the anonymous source, after completing al Badr training, Abu Sayyid returned home to Selet. He then worked alongside Lutfur Rahman in organizing the preparation of hit lists of suspected nationalists. Their role in this was confirmed by a cleric who has first-hand knowledge of their activities during the war. He too fears reprisals from Islamic fundamentalists, so dispatches has concealed his identity and revoiced his evidence. Abu Sayyid and Lutfur Rahman regularly held secret meetings with Jamaat leaders who had drawn up killing lists of so-called miscreants. They had the power to alter these lists. The names were then given to the Pakistan army, who with the help of local collaborators would execute them. As well as organizing killing lists, the Jamaat and the Al-Badr were also involved in mass rape and abducting women for Pakistani soldiers. In September 1971, the Al-Badr and the Pakistan troops raided this tea plantation in Silhet. The ones who were there, they were taken, women were raped. They didn't spare anyone. Hindu, Muslim, Hindu, Muslim tea plantation laborers, upper class women, maids, whoever they came across, they tortured and raped. We even heard that they raped the women in front of their fathers. Saida Jibanessa worked with rape victims after the war. She discovered that the rapes were systematic and organized by the Jamaat and al Badr. The collaborators helped the Pakistanis. They took the sisters when they couldn't find the freedom fighters. They procured thousands of women and girls who were tortured, taken away and raped. After liberation, rape victims were filmed at this welfare center. Hindu women told how they were deliberately made pregnant to force them to have a Muslim child. Many of them had abortions. Some committed suicide. As the effective commander of the al Badr in Silet, Abu Sayyid must have been aware that his men were involved in widespread rape and the preparation of killing lists. He declined several invitations to take part in this program, so dispatches approached him in the street to put the allegations to him. We have evidence that you were involved in war crimes in 1971. What do you have to say about that? These are all news to me. We have evidence that you were senior leader of the al Badr, a Gestapo-like organization. Under your leadership of the al Badr. The al Badr was involved in rape of women and the procuring of women for the Pakistan army. No. And you were involved in preparing lists of your political opponents Quite which were then given to the Pakistan army for their action. I challenge all this. You refute all these allegations? Yes, I refute all these things. All are baseless. 